Hello YouTube, this is another QAZ WSX 2541 Blender tutorial. Today is going to be the first part of my FPS tutorial in, or how to make an FPS game in Blender. So this first part is going to be basically on movement and mouse look. So um, the first thing we got to do, of course, is open up Blender. And so with our new Blend file open now, the uh, first thing we're going to do is switch over to the Blender game for the render engine there. Uh, next I'm going to set up my windows really quick here. I like to have my uh, logic editor down here along the bottom, but uh, whatever suits you is fine as well. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to stretch out this cube here, so I'm going to switch to wireframe mode with Z, go to the side view by pressing 3 on the number pad, and press 5 on the number pad uh, for orthographic view, I think it is. Um, so now I'm going to enter edit mode with tab, I'm going to select the top four vertices there, I'm just going to basically double the height there of the box. Exit edit mode. I'm going to go to origin and origin to geometry. I'm going to drag it just above the green line there because um, that, that's where we'll put our ground at. So we'll hit uh, shift A again, add a plane, stretch that out just a bit, give us a bit of a platform to stand on. So um, next we're going to delete our camera, select the box, and we're going to hit shift S cursor to selected. I'm going to hit shift A and add a camera. And now we'll rotate it on the Z axis so we'll hit R Z 270 and we will drag it up basically to the top and to the left there at the box. And so now we'll select the camera, shift select the box and hit control P. So now uh, whenever you drag the box around the camera follows. So now with the box selected, we're going to go over here to the properties menus and we're going to go to the physics tab. We're going to change it from a static object to a dynamic object. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a material to the object to kind of help it stop sliding. So we go to the material buttons, it should already have a default one on there. We will then scroll down until we go to get to the physics tab down here. And we're just going to set the friction up. I'll set it to 10. We can see how that goes later. So the next thing we're going to add in is our mouse look script. So we're going to select the or um, click and drag these dashes up in the top corner. Drag it over. I'm going to switch this new window to a text editor. So now what I'll do is I'll do text open text block. I'm going to navigate to my desktop or the mouse look script. There will be a link to this in the description. Um, this is this script is provided by tutorials for Blender3D.com. Um, I did modify part of it, and that is that if you have a invert property on here, it only inverts the uh, X rotation axis instead of the uh, Z rotation axis as well. Um, so what we're going to do then on the camera is we're going to add three properties. The first one will be named Adjust, capital A. Second one will be named Cap, capital C. And the third one will be named Invert with a capital I. Um, so Adjust can be a floating point or an integer, but floating point will give you a little bit more adjustability. Cap also a float, and then Invert would be a Boolean. So let me just go ahead and explain what these properties are. The adjust is basically sensitivity. So if we set that up to like three, um, it should give us a pretty standard uh, sensitivity. But of course you can adjust that to your liking. Uh, cap is kind of self-explanatory. It's a uh, cap on how far up and down the player can look. So cap, I'm gonna set that at 90 for now. We can adjust that later. An invert I leave off, but you can you can always turn it on if you want. Um, okay, so now we're going to start setting up the script here. So we're going to add a sensor to the camera. This will be a mouse sensor, and we will have a movement sensor with pulse. We're going to name the sensor Mouse Look, capital M and a capital L. Oops, that's okay. Um, so, and we're going to turn on 
true pulse movement. So whenever you move the mouse, it sends pulse, true level pulses to the Python controller. So next up, uh, add a Python controller. And for the script, we're going to put in mouselook.py. Then we're going to add an actuator to the camera. It's going to be a motion actuator. And we will name this we will name this actuator up down capital U capital D then we're going to select the boundary box or shift select the boundary box sorry about that um, select the camera first then the boundary box then we're going to add an actuator to the boundary box it's going to be another motion actuator and we're going to name this one left right capital L capital R so at that point we should have a working mouse look script and we do uh, so now we can switch from wireframe to uh, texture and you can see well not really well the the gray platform kinda matches the uh, gray background so let's just change that I'm gonna add a material to the uh, ground add a new material that make it green like grass um, so yeah, now you can see it works. You can look around. You can't uh, roll over yourself, so because of the cat and the sensitivity looks good to me. So next, we're going to add in the movement. So for that, we're going to select the cube. You can switch to the camera view for this. Um, so we're going to select the cube. We're going to. I'm going to deselect the link here just to make it a little cleaner on the cube. Um, that basically enables or disables showing the uh, actuators or controllers that are linked to other objects. So I'm going to add, first I'm going to add a keyboard sensor and name this one forward. And this will be the W key. Uh, next off, I'm going to add another keyboard sensor. We're going to name this one backward. This will be the S key. Oh, I forgot. We're going to turn on pulse mode. Next up, we're going to do keyboard left. And um, I'm capitalizing these. So uh, like a capital F for f in forward and a capital B in backward and a capital L in left. Uh, basically just using uh, capital words. So the next one will be another keyboard sensor. This one is, you guessed it, right. I'm going to turn on or use the key D and I thought about didn't use didn't assign one for left so that will be A. Um, I'm going to add another one. This one we will name run. This key will be shift or left shift. Um, next up is a, another keyboard sensor. This one will be called jump and we will put a space bar for that one. And, true, uh, and instead of pulse on this one, we will leave that off and we'll turn tap on. Then we're going to add another sensor, and this one will be a collision sensor. This collision will be looking for the property ground. Okay. So next up, we're going to add a controller. This controller will be a Python controller. And we will basically wire everything up into there all of our sensors will get wired into that Python controller and that will be where our movement script comes in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select the ground object we have and we're going to add a property we're going to call it ground uh, so that the collision sensor actually uh, detects it. So um, this is where the uh, tutorial kind of splits off as to whether you want to uh, go ahead and watch the scripting and maybe learn a little bit about the scripting or you can uh, just copy and paste the uh, script provided in the link. So uh, what we're going to do is going to add a new text block. We're going to name this one movement. And the Python controller we will run the movement script. So, uh, if you want if you want to watch the scripting, I'm going to do that now. 
Otherwise, you just copy and paste the finished script, the link in the description, into here, and then after that it should be working. You may need, you may want to fine tune this friction property here um, to get it so it doesn't slide back whenever you run into walls or anything like that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. So let's go down. Let's go and uh, get started with scripting. So the first thing we're going to do is import the game logic uh, module. So we're going to do import game logic, capital G and capital L for game logic. I'm going to turn on the text coloring and the line numbers, uh, just personal preference. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the controller and the uh, own owner of the object. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to do cont equals game logic dot get current controller. So um, now to get the owner, we're going to use the controller to get the owner. So what we'll do for the owner is we're going to do um, own equals cont dot owner. So that's basically a uh, misspell here. So um, that's something else that's uh, pretty important is making sure that all of the spelling is correct because otherwise the script won't run. So basically what the script would do right now is it would import the game logic module. It would get the current controller that it's running from. In this case, it would be this controller right here. And then it gets the owner of that controller. In this case, that would be cube. So on the next line, we're going to define some variables here. So we're going to do speed equals uh, 0 0.1. Try on the next line, we can do, on the next line, we will do uh, sprint equals, equals speed, we'll do speed times 2. Or actually, let's define a different one altogether. So we'll do speed equals uh, 0 0.1 for right now. For uh, speed equals, we'll do we'll do sp sp sprint. Sprint equals one. So next up, what we'll do is. Um, on the next line, well, actually, we need one point, like one point uh, five. Let's do one point five. So, on the next line, then we're gonna do uh, FB, both capitals equals zero. Go down the next line, LR, both capitals equals zero. And um, uh, let's go up here below sprint and above FB. We'll do uh, jump height equals set it to four for now. So then we'll go down two more lines and we'll do an if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe forward apostrophe close bracket dot dot positive and that's an it that's an if statement basically asking to see if we are, if the uh, sensor named forward is positive, or in this case, if we are pressing the W key. So if forward is positive, we will do capital FB equals speed. Skip a line, and we'll go down here and do if cont dot sensors, open in bracket apostrophe backward apostrophe close bracket dot positive uh, colon uh, then we will do FB equals negative speed skip a line again and we'll do if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe uh, misspelled backward if uh, cont dot sensors uh, left 
apostrophe close bracket dot positive. You're probably getting, you're probably catching on by now. Uh, colon. Now we will do lr equals, and I think this one needs to be negative speed. So now we'll go down to if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe right uh, apostrophe close bracket dot positive. Uh, colon, we will do lr equals speed. Then we will do uh, if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe, and we're gonna go down to jump. So jump apostrophe close bracket dot positive. Colon. We will do uh, now. This is where we'll do something different. Here we will do a own dot apply force open uh, uh, parentheses open bracket, and then we will do a zero point zero comma zero point zero comma, and we will do jump height here. And then we do a close bracket, comma, uh, false, capital F. And then we will do a close parentheses. Uh, something else is in here, uh, content sensors. We're going to rename the uh, collision sensor here to uh, on ground, capital O, capital G. Uh, so then we'll do if jumped out positive and cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe on ground apostrophe close bracket dot positive and that's basically saying that both of these have to be positive the player is pressing the jump key and the uh, boundary box is on the ground Uh, something else is this uh, sprint here. We actually want it, want to leave it at one there. And so on this next one, on this next line, we'll do if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe uh, run apostrophe close bracket dot positive colon. We will do. Uh, Sprint equals 1.5. We'll do 1.5. So then we'll do own dot apply movement uh, open parentheses open bracket and we will do lr comma fb comma uh, 0, 0.0 close bracket comma true close bra um, close parentheses um, and actually here in the f uh, where it has FB we will do a times uh, sprint and at that point we probably want to save so we'll do a file save as I already have a blend file saved and I'll just save over it so then whenever we get in the game we can look around we can move forward back left and right um, jump isn't jumping uh, and whenever we hold shift we go a little bit faster We go a bit faster forward and back. So now to find out what's wrong with the um, up. Oh, the problem is that uh, on the collision sensor we had the the property was ground with a lower or with an uppercase G. This needs to be an uppercase G then as well. 
Okay, so it's still not working. Um, okay, so also the uh, jump height here is only four, so it's only applying a force of four. So what we'll do down here is we'll do jump height times 100. So now whenever we hit play, we get a jump. It's looking a bit floaty. Um, so I'm gonna also turn down the gravity. Oh, it's a lot more than what I wanted, but okay. So now whenever you hit zero to go to the camera view, and whenever we uh, play, we can look around, we can move forward, we can sprint forward and back, we can go left and right, and we can jump. So that's basically, uh, that's the first part of the uh, FPS tutorial in Blender. I hope this helped you out. Um, yeah, so uh, go, I'm going to put up uh, part two as soon as I get all the bugs out with the uh, script and all that, figure out exactly how I want to write the script for the other one. Um, so, yep, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm glad I finally uh, was able to get some screen recording software that works. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Um, got a new microphone. So, uh, I I'm basically was trying to uh, get the overall quality of my tutorials up a bit higher. I also got a new laptop, um, amazing laptop, a SUS G74SX. Um, so I, I think the problem was there were some settings on my old laptop that I had that I don't have now, so it took me a while to try and find some of the video settings that I had. So anyway, thank you very much for watching again, and go watch part two.